something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's previewed. It's previewed. Fix it with Adam and Jay. Hey, Peaches! Oh, welcome to Fix It, where friends don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our listeners. Hi, listeners. Hey, listeners. Ho there, listeners. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Fix It. Um, this is uh, our podcast. We mean you may know us uh, from uh, the wildly successful, the award-winning, ah. the statue-grabbing, the speech giving, the orchestra trying to cut us off, but we have important things to say, YouTube channel, uh-huh. previewed. You may know us from there. You all may, may know us from our award-winning performance in uh, No Country for Old Men. That's right. Yep. We both got an award for that. <laughs> this is our podcast, Fix It, where every week, Adam and I take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there. Was nominated, but maybe got snubbed in the actual award giving proceedings. Always snubbed, and we fix it. And we fix it. Was, I, that, was that a dramatic effect there? Th- yes, we're, we're going to call it a dramatic pause. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you a get pregnant pause. Yeah, if you will. where my like it zooms in and my eyes welling up a little bit, and mm-hmm, I just say, mm-hmm. "And we fix it." No, I completely forgot then, what what the next thing was. I got I got. Can I be honest with you? I was like, ooh, we're coming up with all these different examples. We're nailing it. We're killing it. And then I forgot what I was supposed to say. <laughs> you skipped the needle on your own record. I was giving myself awards in my head for being like, look at all those good examples. Yeah, you're, I, Normally, did, you struggle for stars these. for me. Good job. <laughs> we. Yes, I do. Hello. They like me. They really like me. Um, I, uh, I, yeah. Uh, I'm about like a stone's throw away from, inter- uh, from integrating actual gold stars into my home. Oh, really? Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like I would say I will say snarkily sometimes to Kimberly like, "Oh, do you want like a gold star about that or something?" Mm-hmm. And I can see her go, "Yeah, kind of, yeah, 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 I do." And I'm like, "Oh, maybe that would be a good. Th- maybe she'd like that. Maybe my wife likes. She likes. Oh, she likes. She's one of those school likers. Oh, she enjoyed going to school. Yeah, she uh, like likes getting uh, mm-hmm. accolades. Sometimes I have to be like, "Hey, stop trying to get an A plus in this." <laughs> Like right now with our baby, I'm like, stop trying to get an A plus in pregnancy. Like it's okay. Like but I gotta pass the test. <laughs> I got a test coming up, Jay. It's like yeah, yeah. We got finals but in a couple is, months. That I mean, that test that that, that is an open book test. It kind of that all the answers come to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and there's a yes. lot of proctors. If we're getting into weird test lingo, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, I have to, we pay them a lot of money uh-huh. to, to make sure that you pass that test. Mm-hmm. So I think we'll be okay. I, ho- I hope so. I hope you pass. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's Oscar season. Y- um, yay! Award season. <laughs> it's award season. We've already had the SAG Awards and the Oscars are happening this weekend. Or they were two nights ago as, I, as you're listening to this. Were they? I don't know. I don't know when they come out. Right. I, I think, think I'm think right. Think or maybe they're, they're next weekend. Uh, I think I'm, they're next weekend. I'm, Brian we, yeah. is screaming in his brain right Brian now. Brian does a very good job of setting these things up, so I'm assuming we are ahead of the schedule, our, so it's next weekend. Our producer is a, a very big uh, award season nerd, and so uh, he has uh, he's gets really excited about Oscar season. He's the kind of person that does the ballots and everything. Yeah, like, yeah, like a... You bet on who you think is going to win each category, really, and the person who like you know gets the gets the most right answers, like award like bingo or something like that. Yeah, huh? Yeah, and so he just, he wants us to do an Os- an Oscar uh, episode, and so we are. So uh, we are, and so we are, but we're not fixing the Oscars. No, that was the that- Oscars are already fixed, according <laughs> to some people. <laughs> well, the. <laughs> <laughs> the issue Rigged. the issue we ran into was the whole point the our p- original plan was okay you guys are going to fix the oscars like oh okay cool great a couple and months then, ago that was like all right cool yeah yeah that sounds that. like a great idea yeah. and then we got close to it and then i call adam I'm like cool so how are you going to fix the oscars what's your take and adam goes i don't really watch award shows at all i don't i was like oh okay uh so why did you approve? Why did you say okay to this? 
I figured one of the other guy, one of the other chuckleheads, would come up with a really good, uh, more defined answer. So we I to, was wrong. We had to go back to the drawing board a little bit. So for this episode today, Adam and I are both going to be taking a movie that we've been recommended to fix, mm-hmm. and we are going to be fixing them and turning them into an Oscar an Oscar bait movie. Yep, we're gonna Oscarize a terrible bad movie. Yeah, and it's getting so, I, I which is a very clever idea. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But because we, we all know the formula for Oscar bait films now. Yes. Since they is like it's this been happening the past decade and a half, if not more. So like, okay, wow, this movie's coming out in November. No one, no one's gonna go see this. But this is purely just for the Oscars. God, yeah, yeah. You only got like a couple more weeks before the the window closes for this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. So, what what's your relationship to the Oscars? Clearly, you don't have much of one. I hate them, and I think they're dumb because they don't actually reward the things that need to be rewarded in movies. Okay. Also, I don't see those films. Oh, really? I have no relationship to the movies that always get like nominated for like best picture and stuff like that. Oh. Like, I'm not saying that the the people that get these awards shouldn't be getting them because the Oscars celebrate like the SAG awards. I think a little probably maybe a little bit more honest are just like celebrate the art of making movies and making yeah. movies is an art. There's so much art involved with so many people, but up into this still to this day. And it's a miracle when a movie gets made. Well, yes, it's a miracle because a thousand things can go wrong. A thousand things can go wrong, but there are still things left out of these awards that like should be, I, I don't believe stunt performers no. still still don't have a category. No. And they they, just, totally, they should. totally should. Stunt performers are performers. They yeah. pull off. They're the reason why all they these do things. Some wild stuff. Yes, they do. They put their bodies on the lot. People have died for movies. Yeah. And that should be. Not, I was going to say celebrated, and that's the wrong word. But like, stunt performers should be celebrated, and the people who put their lives on the line. There should be more respect. There should be thing. more respect for the stunt like community. The, the stunt, like the, the concept of a stunt man has always been kind of a gag. Yeah. And it shouldn't be. No. Because like, Ooh. Yeah. Especially nowadays with like John Wick films and stuff like that. The reason why we all love those films is because those stunt performers are insanely good at what they do. Yeah. Yes. A thousand they deserve percent. awards. They deserve recognition. They really do. Yeah. I, I, my relationship to the Oscars, we used to watch it every year growing up. Really? It was like a big deal. Like, well, of course we'd watch the Oscars. Like, every year we would watch oh. like the broadcast, and it was like a big deal in our house. Sure. And then I just kind of fell away from it. I kind of, I think, you know, we moved to this city to, you know, get into show business, and at a certain point, you kind of get so close to it that, like, the, the shine of the rose kind of comes off, and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, the artist won Best Picture? I don't. It was there. Are you you're telling me there wasn't? And I think it also speaks to the fact that us as uh, you know we're we're in this reactor community on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know we're all of these and every and every different group of reactors brings a different piece to the puzzle. Sure. Um, like like for example, like you you have like uh late to the party. They are movie nerds. Yes, they are very knowledgeable. Like they really know the like movies. Yes, they do. And so that's why, like, like if you want someone who knows all the directors and all of that stuff, that's where you go. We're just nerds. <laughs> We're the goofy ones yeah. in the back of the class yeah. cracking jokes yeah. while everyone else is trying to take the damn But test. also really likes comic books and Star Wars and oh, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, we're, we're more, like, we're not necessarily the most knowledgeable when it comes to, like, the movies. Or... Anything really? Just look at our comment section. <laughs> I, one, we don't know much about a lot of one things. One would argue one of the keys to our success is the amount of wrong things that we say, and people just cannot help themselves hopping uh, um, into the comments um, actually, to tell guys, us how stupid we are. <laughs> the Zillow beasts that were from season two of cool, Clone man. Wars. Great. I, I didn't know. I didn't. That was te- over ten years ago. Thanks for the heads up. Preach. <laughs> You know, Jay, the, I, I kind of lied before. There is one award show that I did watch religiously every year as a kid, and that is the MTV Movie Awards. Yeah, you brought that up when we were talking about award shows, and I was like, that's the one? He's like, I, we, we, he's like, this is how you fix the Oscars. You just make it the MTV Music Award or uh, Movie Awards. And I'm like, okay. Well, those categories are actually things that made sense to me. 
And they're best also best fight fun. scene. They're also fun. Yes, best, and it's only under two hours. There's yeah. some cool musical guests. It's not just music from the movies. It's musical guests like you know pop stars from today. Yeah. Hey, you know, best fight, uh, best you know, act, best comedy. That's the other thing. Comedy got its own category. Yeah. I, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of comedy movies out nowadays. Well, there are, but they're on streaming. The business model, but the is business model has so changed so much, so dramatically that we will never get like. Like, big box office comedies just don't happen as much anymore. That being said, though, the Oscars and the Emmys, comedies are still getting disrespected. They need their own category. Because yeah. comedy is lumped into other things. I agree. And that is not fair to the art of comedy. Because comedy is very hard. It's Comedic really hard. films is even harder yep. because you have no audience. And you're basically doing it in post and making sure these trying to figure out how to capture these amazing performances and translate them to the audience, you know, months later. So, like... Yeah. Yeah. It's it's bull is what it is. All right. That's fair. But they have a Best Comedy Award, the uh, MTV Movie Awards. Yeah. I I mean, I am in SAG, so I get a lot of screeners usually. Sure. So, I try to keep up as much as I can. Mm-hmm. But it's like... Also, like, this year, I was like... I mean, everything... We saw everything everywhere all at once, obviously. Oh, sure. That yeah. Was it was great. The, yeah. But there's just, like, a lot of movies that I'm like, yeah, I, I just haven't seen it. And it's the kind of thing... The amount of... Do you? We all have those friends that like yeah. are really into like good film. Sure. And how often are you like when people are like, "Hey, did you see this?" And you're like, "Yeah." Never. Knowing full well that you didn't. No, I don't do that. Oh. Uh, no, because they're like, "Have you seen Atonement?" No. Why would I see Atonement? I eventually oh, did okay, see cool. Atonement, and I was like. Yeah, I shouldn't have watched this movie. That explains oh, a lot. Oh, they, sorry, spoiler alert for Atonement. Oh, they just they just drowned in the subway? Oh, the, is the story is told from the perspective of the sister that ruined this guy's life at the beginning? Oh, this movie sucks. <laughs> Why? Do, wow. I'm not going to get these hours back. He just dies of syphilis or whatever he got. <laughs> this is the kind of thing you do, Wow. This is the kind of thing you did in fix it for. Adam's hot take on... The movie Atonement. This movie is sad and dumb. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I forget that you have no problem uh, just... Uh, just. Oh, being... yeah. Oh, the point, hill, flag. Yeah. yeah, you can't just... See, I will people please to the point where I'll pretend that I saw a movie I didn't. You will oh. just be like, no, I want to see that. It looks stupid. It looks stupid. Ah, cool. Good talking to you. Yeah. Okay, All right. bye, nerd. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've... I, I've got I've got this wall to stand against with my backpack at this party. You seen the artist? No, I haven't seen the artist. Get out of here! Why would I watch the artist? It was actually pretty fun, but I don't know, Jay. I've never seen it. I know. Okay. Wow. I want to be entertained by movies, and that's why I went. That's why I watched the MTV Movie Awards. They, those were entertaining. <laughs> they were. They were entertaining. I know. I know. It's just this is not the hill that I thought you would die on. Like this, I learn more and more about you every day, and it's such Jay, a delight. What happened at last year's Oscars? I don't know. Oh, didn't that's when Chris uh, Chris Rock got slapped? That's my point. Yeah. The only thing you remember from last year's Oscars, yeah, was the fact that Will Smith smacked at Chris Rock. That's it. It's the only thing most people remember about it because he undercut uh, his own Oscar win. He did. Yeah. 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 So it's not. It's just. It's just, and it's also boring. If it, if it was fast, if it was much faster, and it's kind of like it does let's not, go, it doesn't with, need to let's be a come on, let's go. It doesn't need to be the a slowest four hours. point. In the Oscars should be the in memoriam. Yes. Let's take some respect, you know, and take some time to respect those we and lost. And if anything, I think that's and the then, one part that actually clips. You know. Huh. They like really kind of like all right, let's go. Boop, boop, but other boop. than that, it's just like why is this three hours? Yeah. Good lord. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, but before we get into uh, turning some uh, some box office bombs mm-hmm. into into Oscar, Oscar bait, da- Oscar darlings, Oscar darlings, uh, Adam, how you doing? Jay, I'm doing great. We finished the three episodes, mini episodes of the bonus action show that was coming out at some point in the near future. Near no, somewhere in the mid near future. Mm-hmm. Not far future. Soonish future, futureish. Soon, I, I've been saying t- soon TM. Soon TM. Yeah. Um. We did it in my living room. It and I actually compiled. I'm. I'm. 
I'm making a small... You were there last week. I was there last week. No, yeah, I'm and, saying and, the and, episode and they were there, Yeah, they were there last week. Um, I compiled... Um, I'm going to make a little uh, thing for the the cast of like... It's going to be a while since you guys see, until you see you know, yeah. see this because we've got to do a lot of post and editing and stuff like that. But I wanted to like make them something like... you can. So like, hey, see what you've done. This is fantastic. I was going to make a little highlight reel of Hell stuff yeah. for everybody. I love everything about that. So I can put all the stuff on a, on a timeline at home and it's over eight hours of content <laughs> that we shot over the three episodes granted it's in every episode we took a break for 20 minutes let the cameras rolling so like, yeah there's big chunks that we're cutting out sure but but we filmed a lot of stuff and it's really fun <laughs> and it's really it's really actually it's very good and it's like i just i'm just the fire is lit under me to make it because it is so good and we there was such magic captured in the room that's like yeah oh whoa, 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 i want to see the finished product of this because we've got the content of it now we just got to dress it up a little bit yeah so and mando's out and Mando was good, and Bad Batch is getting better, and just like, and Last of Us is almost done. Yeah. So like, we're into like a little, little fun this spot. This Last of Us season has like clipped, kind like of really clipped. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, but also I, they've got a lot to do in two episodes. Two ep- two episodes left. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Why are they trying to do the whole first game in one season? Because it's probably a smaller story than. The second game? That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, but that... Mm. Yeah. It's an exciting time to, be, to do what we're doing. Yeah, it for is. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. I just got... I, I, I just, like, went into... I was just thinking about Last of Us, and I just got lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. How are they going to do all that in two, in two episodes? Like, uh, I although I... <laughs> there's been, a, like, a lot of hullabaloo online of, like, this past episode being kind of filler. And the backlash of a lot of script directors being like, hey, you guys are all using the concept or the term filler wrong. Like, taking a moment and, like, expanding a character and, like, giving you backstory and, give like, f- like, like rounding out a character yes. is not filler. It's not filler. Like, you guys are not using that term cor- incorrectly. Mm-hmm. And when, when certain people are like, man, I hated this past episode. It was so boring. I was like, what are you talking about? It's like, what are you talking... But also, you have to remember... Like, it's the kind of thing where you have to remember a lot of people don't necessarily know what's going to happen to e- with Ellie and do not understand the magnitude of her journey. Yes. So, like, I, I get it to a certain degree. Sure. Well, also, I mean, the fact that anime has become so prevalent in the West now is like, I believe that's for kind of where that term originated from was filler arcs. Because back in the day, like, the major... Uh, shows were kind of running alongside the manga, yeah. and sometimes they would catch up and like, uh, we need the cart the, the comic to go further so we can you know animate stuff. So we're gonna we're doing an anime only arc, and that would be called a filler arc because that wasn't actually part of the main story. And yeah. was like, but we want the main story when all the cool stuff happens. Like, yeah, well, leave it to us. We're gonna make our own thirty episode arc with bad guys that don't exist in the comics. But sure. like, this is not. As good as the as the comic, uh, stupid filler arcs, and now gotcha. it's kind of come into like, oh, those filler episodes of Bad Batch were like, not a lot of stuff happens, but they got to meet their sixteen episode uh, contract. There's been less of them this season. I just yeah, but, but that first season I was like, there was hey, a couple. There was a couple. I don't know why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Like because we didn't learn anything about the character. But I will say about Bad Batch this past week, and and it continues to. That's the thing about that show is that like when it's just them doing missions, it's fun, it's entertaining, mm-hmm. but like, but then they get back to the, all the stuff going on with like what they're trying to do, with, like the Empire is trying to do with cloning and mm-hmm. like why they bombed Camino and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. Like that stuff is real good. Yes. And that's the stuff where I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I almost get mad because I'm like, hey, we've been like, it's been like nine episodes and we haven't mentioned this. Can we, woo, I need more of this, please. Yeah. 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 Who? Making stuff. Isn't it fun? Yes. I, I actually really... I've, I've, that's what I've been thinking about the past week. Since we've come down from the high of last weekend of like, man, I really like making stuff. It's so much fun making things. I'm so exhausted. We're making so much stuff. And there's like a couple of things we're just like waiting for time to make. It was like like the um, Resident Evil 4 is coming out a couple soon and we wanted, we wanted to play the last... Uh, the uh, Dead yeah, space. do we want to stream that? Or I don't. I don't think Dead Space is going to happen. 
I'm just taking that off the board. Okay. Because Resident Evil's coming out soon. We oh, should sure. just focus on that. Sure. I don't know when we're going to play Dead Space. I don't know. I, I want to, though. I It'd think, think take... it would be fun, but yeah, I know. I know. I think it just needs to be off the whiteboard. It's, it's, I, I thought about that today. I was like, when are we doing that? I don't want to. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, especially with Resident Evil coming out, we can stream that. Like, we can make that a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. There's not enough time in the day, Jay. There's just not. There's just not. We need to clone ourselves. So that one, we know how we kiss. Yes. And two, we can make more stuff. Yeah, we got to know how we kiss. We got to know how we and, kiss. And step three, profit. Profit. Always. That's always, If it's not your step three, then are you... No, what are we even doing what here? Are we, <laughs> <laughs> what are we even doing here? Oh, man. Uh, that's awesome, dude. Well, I think before before we like uh, hop onto this onto this little episode and hop onto our fixes and hop onto any more Oscar talk, I think... Hey, Brian. Oh, Brian. I know you've been itching... To talk about the Oscars, because it's your absolute favorite thing. Brian, why don't you roll that beautiful bean fun fact footage? Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. And today we're talking about the Academy Awards, a.k.a. the Oscars. The first Oscar ceremony was held in 1929 as a private dinner. In 1930, it was on the radio. And in 1953, it was first televised. In terms of ratings, the highest watched Oscars was the 70th Academy Awards when Titanic won Best Picture, and that was about 57 million people. Now, the bottom two Oscar ceremonies in terms of viewership were the last two years. So the 93rd, where Nomadland won, that was 10 million, and then the 94th, which was last year with Coda, which was 16 million viewers. Now, the Oscars was a big deal in my house. We grew up watching them every single year. It's my favorite televised list. And I had a handbook growing up with all the winners. I could literally name every single Best Picture winner in order. Clearly, I was missing some friends in middle school. But I got really good at guessing all of the winners. However, in the past maybe 15, 20 years, I've become much more disenchanted with the Oscars. And and that's for a whole slew of reasons. But for more of my in-depth Oscar thoughts, some fun facts, and Oscar trivia, check out the extended Brian's Fun Fact footage segment on the audio-only version of this podcast. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen. Wonderful job, Brian. That was a lot of Oscar facts. A lot of Oscar facts. That's I, I did not know that the ratings were fluctuated so much over the past few decades. That's crazy. Also makes sense. Did you ever dream of winning an Oscar? No. No? Mm-mm. Really? Nope. Did you ever dreamed of winning an award? I not not really. I think I just wanted to be popular. I think my main focus as a kid was just to be popular. But you like but you never like saw like you never like thought about what you'd say in like an, an award acceptance speech or anything oh, like that's, that. Oh, that's I think that's different than actually like winning an award though. No. The, the, I separate that in my that's head. That's what I'm talking about, though. You never, oh, like, having you an never award fantasized speech? like winning the award well, and I, giving this well, speech. Well, I am contractually obligated to thank my dadager first if I win any award. Okay. And then my mom. Okay. So. So your parents made sure that the, you would thank them, but you've never like you never fantasized about winning an award of any kind. If you've ever like written an imaginary like speech. Not really. Huh. I think about that all the time. Really? Anytime I think it, I, anytime I see an award speech, mm-hmm. my whole thought process the entire time is, "What would I say if I ever won an award?" What would you say if you won an award? I'm Jake? not 100 percent sure. You know, I have be... an award right here, Jake. I'm gonna go ahead. What if I gave you this? Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah. This uh, amazing uh, trophy for winning the Winter Invitational. <laughs> this is not my of, trophy. Of this is Mario, Rexy's. The Mario I don't Party. appreciate being put on the spot like this. Mario Party. I don't think. I don't think this uh, is. Uh, congratulations, Jay. You won this. You win this award. And the music fades. No. Ba, but, ba, but, ba, okay. Ba, ba, the question ba, is: ba, da, da, da. It's who do you thank in what order? Yeah. I don't know. I don't appreciate putting. Put on, I never do this to you, Jay. You're an improviser. I understand that, but see, <laughs> uh, the question the the question arises: Do I thank Kimberly first or last? Oh, and what's your hierarchy of when I'm thanking people? Sure. I mean, I actually, you know, what I need. I think I need to thank my dadager once again 
of just making sure that he comes no, first. I've thought about it. If I oh, ever okay. won an award, sure. Since since you're since you're forcing this upon me, you really want me to take it seriously. The the main con- I mean, obviously, we thank the people in the way we want to thank them. Like, uh, it, the order of importance maybe isn't really that important. Hence, the term. You know what I mean? Uh, it's I would I would thank all of the people specifically like all the agents and yada, yada yada but then specifically the people that have helped me get to where i am mm-hmm. in that i think it's the the important like what would be important in my speech was to be like hey nobody does this alone sure like this is like it takes a village mm-hmm. it takes a village to raise a to raise a kid yes it does and it takes an army to raise an actor like it's oh, not okay it doesn't just happen no it doesn't like, all the people that have let me crash at their house mm-hmm. have like Made made it easier for me to get to auditions. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously my parents are included in that, but there's also just like an army of people mm-hmm. that like along the way have helped me get yeah. there. So, I think that's kind of the more important thing. Like, yes, you want to professionally thank all the people that like it's like professional to thank, right? You know. So they'll let you still work and work for you and generate more money and stuff. Like, of course, of course, of course. I mean, a lot of this industry is just like you know everyone's just blowing each other's buttholes. You know what I mean? Yep. Just smoke, smoke, smoke. Hollywood is just basically a jug band, Jay. Yeah, it's just a big butthole jug band. <laughs> We're butthole jug band. We just need a one-word suggestion to get started. I think that's kind of that's what I've always thought. I think like the Yamamoto's and the Zerwesties and the Pro Throws and like all the people that have like you know helped me get to where I am. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the lashes now. Yes, a part of that as well. Obviously, well, yeah, but that would that be that's different though, because you're you're not in like the in that segment. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then lastly, I just thank Kimberly. Lastly, yeah, and most important and most, most importantly, importantly, yeah, because she just sees me for me, and I hope everybody gets that one day. And I know not everybody does, and that makes me sad. Yeah, yeah. Well. Well, thanks for bringing the room down, Lashy. Hey, you're, it's your Oscar speech. <laughs> Get out of here. They're playing the Tetris one. No, no. I, there's more people to thank. Okay, so we've got some stinkers to fix. We week. have some really bad movies that you'd never think would ever be anywhere near the Oscars. And we're going to make them critic darlings. We don't even need like a, a, a push campaign of us like, hey, for your consideration, this movie for best picture. No, no. We don't need those for these. These are going to be such good pitches. They're like, of course this would be in best picture category because these movies are going to be amazing. They yeah. were bad, and now they're going to be amazing. All right. So I'm going first. Okay. Sounds great. So the movie that I picked to turn into Oscar bait is, I believe it's 1999's Wild Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right wiki wild wild wiki wild wild west remember this is the, the will smith era when he was in a movie and he'd also write a song for it yes this was a decent song with a bad movie unlike it, men in black which had a great song and was also a very fun movie awesome uh it's also by the same team that did men in black his name was barry sonnenfeld okay so uh, for, I'm going to do a, a quick plot drop. If you don't remember this, because there's no reason why you should. It was over 20 years ago, and it's a it's, bad movie. It's one of Kimberly's favorite movies. Shut Kimberly up. Kimberly loves Wild Wild West. Why? Because she likes the cool train. <laughs> she likes the cool. She likes Kevin Klein's cool train okay. with all the cool stuff. Okay. That's she has other reasons to tell me why, but that's the long that's of the, the short main of it. one. Kimberly loves trains. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, she really does. It's, huh. it's kind of adorable. Well, here a ba- here's the basic plot of Wild Wild West. Um, Will Smith. Wiki Wild Wild. Wiki Wild. <laughs> Wiki Wiki Wild Wild. Uh, Will Smith is Agent Jim West. And uh, Desperado. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to me how that movie was such a cultural touchstone, and it was still so bad. Like it was, no one could avoid Wild Wild West. It was everywhere. <laughs> it was everywhere. That song was everywhere. 
it was just like even though it's so funny to me how much like how much everyone has a visceral response at least from our age group about wild wild west because like there was literally you couldn't avoid it <laughs> it was like one of the biggest movies of the summer and it just <laughs> yeah stank yeah in the late 90s there was like there there was three inevitabilities of life death taxes and having a visceral response to wild wild like knowing what wild wild west was yeah uh, so, and then, um, who is it? Um, Artemis Gordon is Kevin Klein's character, which I just, just, just Kevin, um, Kevin, Kevin Klein. And uh, they are tasked to finding out what the heck is going on we- out west around the ceremony of, um, like, the meeting ceremony of the the railroads. They're, like, they're going to drive oh, in the golden yes, spike yes, and yes. meet the railroads. And President uh, Ulysses S. Grant is going to be there. Now, in, rea- in reality, that didn't happen. This is just a fictional event happening in the past. Sure. Um, he was going to be there, but there was a. they knew they got some intel that there's going to be an assassination attempt. So they go out west to try to figure out what's going on. because, like, And also, scientists have been getting kidnapped because they're like Wild West scientists and stuff. And they try to track down who's, who's going to kill the president and where are all these scientists going. And one of the scientists' daughter is Selma Hayek, who is, you know, super hot and a good actress. And she, so she's in the movie. Yeah. And uh, it turns out that her dad's one of the guys who's been kidnapped. And then they got to figure out what's going on. And at some point, they get magnets put around their necks. Yeah, man. And it's really, it's like the, the set piece of the movie. Yeah. And it's really, really stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. And then they get out of it. And then it turns out that Ket. Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. What a an amazing director, an amazing actor. Yeah, is the bad guy in this movie. Mm-hmm. He has no legs. Yeah, and they give him like a little spider. They like give him spider legs. Yeah, it's a steampunk inspired movie. They give him spider legs. It's bad CG. It's he's just crawling around being like, I'm gonna kill the president because I want to like split up America to like all these different factions or whatever. It makes. Yeah. Not a lot of sense. Nope. And then a giant mechanical spider just arises from the desert. Yeah. And starts blowing up a town. Uh-huh. And they got to destroy a ma- mechanical spider. It's the whole secret, like, what's up with all these mechanical spiders being in movies? Yeah. There's that, is that well, trend? Well, you heard that Kevin Smith interview, right? Yes. About his Superman script. Is... Yeah, and he went to what's his name? And yes, like, and he just kept bringing up like in Superman will fight a giant mechanical spider. Yes, and then he was like, and then he turned around and he was like, and then I saw Wild Wild West and son of a gun, <laughs> there was a giant mechanical spider. Yeah. He's like, I don't know, but like that was like in the industry, like everyone would be like, oh, do you talk? What was the director's name again? Uh, Barry Sonnenfeld was like, oh, the Wild West. To, did you talk to Sonnenfeld? Yeah, did he talk about a giant metal spider? He won't shut up about it. Like in every interview. That so uh, that funny. is why there's like that's why uh, in Man of Steel there is when Superman goes to fight the the the, the ship that's in India, yeah. um, that's why there's like robotic tentacle arms and stuff like that because Superman's got to fight a mechanical esque yeah. spider. It's like I don't it's the, it's a bad design, it's stupid. Stop. No one cares. Yeah. No one cares about mechanical spiders. That's not a good design. Anyways, they they defeat the bad guy Lucy Ulysses S Grant. Drives a spike home, and everything's happy and it's fine in the end. Yeah, and it's a really bad, stupid movie. It's not even funny. It's bad. You want to know what movie uh, Will Smith passed up to be in Wild Wild West? Oh, ninety nine, The Matrix. Yeah, he was supposed to be Neo, and he passed it up to be in Wild Wild West. Wiki wiki, wiki wiki, wah wah. Well, l- let's be real. Let's be real. I think probably I think Will Smith probably made more money off of Wild Wild West than Keanu Reeves made off of the Matrix franchise. Yeah, I you know what? From a money standpoint, you're probably right. Because of the song, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. All of like he was probably able to get such a better deal. Well, he on, was coming off of Oh, this in, was Independence Day. Well, he no, Men this in Black. specifically was like Wild Wild West like followed the Men in Black model. Yes. Exactly. Like it yeah. had the Will Smith yes. song. Well, Bonus, Barry Seinfeld did the Men in Black movies. Yes. It was the same, yeah. Like it had the same it had the same like vibe and mm-hmm. the same hype. Yep. Like for some reason, like I feel like they got tied together like mentally for a lot of people. Like it was well, a him huge being partnered deal. with an older white guy, very yeah. similar to the Men in Black suit. Yeah, it's just like it was. It was the the same formula set in the Wild Wild West universe, which was a show back in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. Um, but it it just that anything can happen with aliens and stuff. 
Because, I mean, there's source material, so you can kind of go off a little bit of that. But, like, it's also just aliens and cool tech and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you can ba- pretty much do anything there. Yeah. The Wild West? Yeah, no. You, you, you can't exactly just do anything. No. So, like, giant death machines in, in, 19, in 1869? N- uh, no? No. All How I about no? Is, all I remember is them playing uh, the last moments of that guy's life through his eyeballs like the head on the projector thing and i was like that's right i'm out oh i forgot about that i'm out oh god wow yeah it's a truly pretty bad movie it's a really bad movie it's a bad it's a bad movie uh but before i make it oscar bait hey hey brian do you want to give us a little uh little little, uh little fun size little snack sized version of your beautiful Bean fun fact footage. Thank you, gentlemen. Today we are trying to Oscarize the Wild Wild Steampunk Romp 1999's Wild Wild West, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld and starring Will Smith, Kevin Klein, Selma Hayek, and Kenneth Branagh. This movie is very, very loosely based on the 1960s TV show of the same name, and it made $222.1 million on a budget of around $241 million. Now, the history of this movie and how it got made is absolutely fascinating, and Jay and Adam have already kind of pointed a little bit of that out. But if you do care, this movie has a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes and won five Razzies that year at the Razzies, including Worst Song and Worst Picture. So this is the perfect movie, a Worst Picture winner, to turn into an Oscar movie. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, that movie's bad. It was really... It was really bad. Man. But I'm glad he did it, because we got Keanu Reeves in The Matrix. And yes. that started a trend... In a direction... I, I don't know, man. If Will Smith had been in the Matrix movies, maybe we he would have been, you know... Everyone's like, oh, well, Keanu was the right guy for the job. I'm like, well, I mean, those last two movies were not good. Just a farm-friendly reminder to everybody. They were not the best, One no. of these days, we're going to fix the Matrix franchise, and I, I feel like that's going to be like a three-hour show. A three-hour show. A three-hour show. <laughs> I'm clearly well, Gilligan. Maybe, you yeah. made me spit out my drink. Yeah. And who am I? It's the captain. If you, you 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 can't even say it right, I don't remember to be honest. The skipper. Skipper. I'm not the skipper. Skipper. I'm the profe- no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm, I'm the prof- I'm professor. If I have anything, I'm Mister Howell. You don't you the, don't have Howell energy. I have skipper energy. You have skipper energy. Is that supposed to be a compliment in any way? Yes, Jay. The skipper and Gilligan are a comedic duo in the classic sense of Lauren Hardy. Yeah, but I so think like, but I think in our normal in our normal like expectations for us comedically i feel like i'm more of a skip or i'm more of a gilligan and you're more of a skipper well i'm just bigger I'm beaker you. you're honeydew so like yeah me, 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 me. yeah maybe you should be me me and a lot more me, instead me, of just me, chit-chatting me, about how i'm the skipper how about me, 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 me. yeah that's right you just me, you just beep or speak the whole time all right fix wild wild west my dude okay so this isn't going to be Oscar Bay. This is not going to be some long drawn. I did not write paragraphs. This is going to be more of just kind of more of the same kind of what, yeah, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. feel is we're going for here. Um, so instead of taking Wild Wild West, which is a known property from it was from a TV show back in the day, um, keep all the main characters, and I'm keeping all of the actors because this cast is great. They're very talented. They can pull this off. But instead of a comedy, we're going to make this a period drama. Oh, okay. so it kind of in line of glory, which I believe came out in the nineties. Yeah, right? no, yeah. So like, uh-huh. sl- slightly desaturated. Uh, okay, but like, we're this is we're t- I you know I kind of because when I picked it's like you know what it was a bad movie. Wow, Wow West. Let me think. Oh, there are some pot because there are Oscar bait movies. You know, have those. Cert- they love talking about like you know people with disabilities, period pieces, period pieces that you know low desaturated. Um, all. You know, very serious topics. Yes. Uh, like, you know, there's really social problems. Like, they really love digging into this stuff. Yeah. So I figured, well, if this movie takes place in, ni- eight, sorry, 1869, four years after the Civil War, four years after Lincoln has been assassinated, and, the, and U- Ulysses S. Grant is the second president after uh, Lincoln has died. 
Yeah. So reconstruction is still going on. So the, the country is still in a very, in a lot of turmoil of putting itself back together. Yes. There are a lot of forces at play with different sects of society trying to it integrate that, themselves. It wouldn't have been that hard to destroy like those connections. You didn't need a gigantic robotic spider. You really didn't. <laughs> But wouldn't it be more fun if you did? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and granted I didn't do a, you know a crap ton of research about like all the different things. <laughs> Great, but <laughs> but I'm going to cr- basically just kind of just thinking about it. I'm like, okay, 1869, the country's trying to put it back itself back together. There's so many different sects of people in society like intermingling and like people trying to like rebuild their lives heading out west, like. This yes. is rife for like a just all these things crashing together in like one scenario of just like oh we can get lit, we can touch a lot of wheels or we can check a lot of boxes yeah. that Oscar's like so um, Will Smith I, I, the characters are the same so Will Smith's playing Jim West he's a former Desperado. <laughs> he's, a, <laughs> he's a former Union soldier from an all black unit. Like in glory. Oh, okay. He survived though. Yeah. Uh, and he, so, but he was, yeah, obviously they were disrespected during the war and he's finding it hard to fit in to society as it is now yeah. with all these, you know, with all African Americans being free and stuff. Um, and, you know, he works for the government. And so people are just like, you know, there's that whole race angle there that he's like, I'm trying to do my job, but there are, you know, a lot of people that like still don't respect him. Even people from the North. It's like, oh, I yeah. don't know where I fit. I just helped k- save the country. But like, what is my place? Yeah, in it? why do I? Why did I fight for this country if it's going to treat me like this? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That has Oscar mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Kevin Klein, who uh, is Officer Gordon, um, he's he was. I'm going to have him just kind of be haunted by his failure to protect Lincoln. Not that there was really a Secret Service back then. Whoa. But like you know, he could kind of been in and around the you know I don't know like mounted police or whatever the, whatever the the before the Secret Service existed. No. Yes. Yes. yes whatever yes. that's whatever that was that should have been in charge of protecting the president. Fun fact about the Secret Service. Do you know what branch of the gut like what part of the government the Secret Service actually worked for? Treasury. Yeah. It's interesting, right? It, it, it's yeah. It doesn't yeah. I don't really know why, but I just neither, neither do I. Yeah, I guess they needed it somewhere from the executive, and they just figured the treasury was part of it. And could yeah. take a, I don't know. Yeah, but so he's haunted by his failure to protect Lincoln. So he is fighting. Um, um, he's an alcoholic. He's fighting his addiction. Oh, okay. And that's another big box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oscars checks love it. addiction. Totally checks love another box. Okay. okay. So yeah. um. Lo- Kenneth Branagh's character, Loveless, and you also have a you have a crew of actors in this movie that could give these per- good performances under these circumstances. Oh yes, like you really don't have to recast this at all. No, mine I had to kind of like <laughs> I, had to, I had the cast had to go. Um, okay, so Kenneth Branagh is um, a Loveless, the guy. Uh, so um, he doesn't have any legs in the movie, mm-hmm. um, and he has robot legs at the end. Uh, I'm just having so there's no CG in this movie, so I'm just having him be a, a Union soldier that lost his legs during the Civil War. Great, and so but he's well, not great that he lost his legs, but you know right. what I mean. Yes, so uh, so he's like he's basically being a, a handicapped uh, advocate for all the wounded, like all the veterans of the war, like maybe starting like VA responsibilities, just and trying like to. That. Yes, his yes. point is like, hey, a lot of us were wounded and are disabled now in different, you know, different ways, and we are not being treated. We we need help from the government, and we are not getting it. Yeah, like I imagine, like the line is like, we like we paid we paid the the cost uh, uh, for the, for this country's freedom, and uh, we've now cl- come to claim our debt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's happened after World War One. Yeah. So like this is kind of like you know we're kind of we're merely asked for what we're owed, sir. I he, I know he were he's a Union soldier, but I the one wasn't he Southern in the movie? I think he was. I'm just making him Union in this That's one fine. just to kind of just to you know, make that it is little, make, fine. make it a little easier, sir. <laughs> but he sees he moved out west and is a, he sees the way handicapped people are treated. Yeah. And is like the, we someone needs to be advocating for these people. Like, Absolutely. We, we deserve rights and recognition. Checks another box. Checks another box. Oscars are people like, love that buzzing, box. Baby, they're buzzing. They love all this stuff. Okay, here's and here's another one. So Selma Hayek is Rita, right? So she's also in this town, but uh, she is um, a Mexican American and people and the Mexican American war was twenty years ago. Yeah. So like and they are out west. Part of I I think they were in New Mexico was where this the movies took place. You really did a lot of research. I, really. I'm looking for boxes, Jay. <laughs> I am checking those Oscar boxes. This wasn't, this wasn't a. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I'm gonna and and they also love this. So Selma Hayek is finds herself, you know, in this town, and you know, it, as as a Mexican American immigrant or whatever, however you want to say it, or you know, in in that time period, I don't exactly know how they uh, classify those people. Um, but like you know, she's obviously getting disrespected. People don't like yeah. like her, appreciate, her, but she's just mm-hmm. looking for a new life. Um, and of course. She happens to be a sex worker because that is, you know, that's what they also Oscars love that yes. type, that storyline as well. And it gives us another, you know, it gives us two boxes, really. So, you know, from her Mexican uh, American uh, heritage and also that, you know, from the from a sex worker perspective yeah. in the Wild West, you know, she's just trying to trying to find have a better life. Yeah. But all these things. Are, and also she's but also she's trying to take justice in her own hands. It's like a, it's like an Aaron Brockovich kind of situation. Well, here's the thing. I want to make this movie like a, a a murder mystery. Oh, so what happens is that Ulysses S. Grant, the ceremony that does not exist in real life, I you know what is actually like a decent idea that they just get him out there. Yeah. So like, okay, he's gonna go and be help with the golden still golden um, spike or whatever to the thing to connect the railroads. Great. He's going out, this, but there's been uh, like uh, some hush hush, like oh yeah, there's like a plot to kill the president. And so they're going to send uh, Jim West and Gordon, Agent Gordon, to go out there and figure out what was going on. So they go out to this old west town where the thing is going to take place, where all these things are interconnecting with each other. All these different sexes of society and these people are, you know, dealing with all their different issues. And we're going to get a slice of, like, what is life is like out here in the old west. And, like, we're going to try to figure out who wants to kill the president. A lot of people wouldn't mind killing Ulysses S. Grant. But so there's a little bit of a murder mystery. They they find some some possible suspects. People start to end up dying. There's like, oh no, time's running out. Grant's gonna show up soon, but they like, haven't quite figured out who is trying to kill him. So it's kind of like that. Um, what was that movie from the '90s where they had the plastic gun? Oh, I actually don't. I know, you know what, what I'm you're talking, talking about, about, but I don't know what movie that is. Like like that movie. You know, there's that that sense of like I'm trying to. We're trying to track down who this guy is. He's got like a cool. He's got a, a plan to do it at the ceremony. And of course, it turns out that it is going to be loveless. Yes. But like, and the reason. But it comes as a betrayal. Sure. Well, yeah. because no one would suspect the disabled. Yeah. They're, people just walk right past them. They never see them. But they have, you know, with crutches and stuff it's like, like I'll that. I'll be seen now. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I we've been well, there's been an outcry for uh, for assistance, and now we need to take it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean. And so, but and and so through this, like a lot of people learn a lot of lessons about uh, how other people are living their life because everyone's the same. Everyone's just trying to move on past this. And giant it becomes thing. like cr- the movie Crash, where yes, everyone, yes, 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 it's like Crash, where everyone's kind of like it becomes a larger scope of what Reconstruction actually is. Yes, and we can see how people are trying to come do their best, but we know from history how it's not going to work. But you see how some people are trying, so the, but yeah, not. It becomes, everyone kind of becomes the paragon of all the people trying to come together to make to build America. Re- rebuild America. Yeah. Re- to stitch it back together. Huh. Okay. Yeah. That just, got, that just gave me goosebumps a little bit. <laughs> so ultimately, at the end, Loveless does a s- attempt to, to kill Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, but Jim West and Gordon, they, they do stop him. And... In real life, um, Grant went on to start the Justice Department and uh, worked with um, radical Republicans back in the day, and this is from Wikipedia, which would now be the Democrats, to help protect African Americans during Reconstruction. Yeah. So, like, he can learn some lessons from, like, the report that Jim West and Gordon give him of, like, hey, all this stuff was going on out West as people were trying to, you know, make new lives and stuff, like, but this is just symptomatic of what's going on. In the in the states, and Kevin Klein overcomes his alcoholism yes. to save another president, yes, and redeem himself, yes, for not saving. Uh, that's really good, dude. That's free. A lot of boxes good. checked. Some masterful performances. Murder mystery. Yeah. Old West period piece. Yeah, and there's a lot of boxes. The president here. is like, you know, you know, uh, well, I've always, I always thought someone was going to try to take my life, but I, I, you know, I've. I always imagined the people that would save my life that day, and I, I, and I never imagined it would look a gr- like a group like you guys, and I think that's that's on me. Yeah. Like, thank you for not only saving my life, but re- mm-hmm. reminding me what's possible in this great nation. Mm-hmm. And I'm almost crying. <laughs> yes. 
Because <laughs> so it's also a little bit like you know this 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 country is uh, capable of amazing things That's when we really all good, come dude. together. I like that a lot. Put our differences aside and realize what we really need to do. Oh, you're gonna hate my face so much. No, it's okay. Oh, we, 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 talked, we talked about this a little bit. It turned out I took this like really seriously. It was like I got I got a funny idea. So that's why I'm going first. So I'm telling, but like, oh, that's really good, period man. piece in the, like, well, Ye- Yellowstone, right? Is that a series that like all our parents really love right now? Yeah, my, yeah, my parents I've never, can't. I've never seen it. My parents it. won't stop talking about it. But like, <laughs> the Old West is, you know, is a really long time ago. So this movie takes place 160 years ago. But like, that's not too long that we can kind of like, you know what? We have pictures and stuff. We know the Civil War really well. We yeah. can, we know that history there was a lot of things going on that we really could deep dive into and like not not modernize it a little bit, but just like you're like, hey, we're dealing with a lot of things in modern time as well that seem somehow to echo the time in and around the Civil War that like maybe yeah. this would be a good story to tell right now. And hey, what if we all came together in peace and harmony and solved a problem and fixed things together? I'm telling you, man, I would like to thank the Academy. <laughs> I like to thank my dad. I like to thank my dadager for believing in me. Uh, I, I have to uh, have to also thank my momager as well. Uh, I, you know, I want to thank everyone who disrespected me as a child and said I couldn't do it. F- F- Why you. does everything have to be vengeance with you? Why does everything have to be? Because I'm fueled by spite, Jay. This Apparently. is my time. Get out of here. Yeah, That's get no off stage. I'm the one that wrote That's this movie. No way to live. I uh, know, <laughs> but just who has the glory? Who's got the trophy? Gonna get this trophy. A stab is the slow trophy you never see coming. Yeah, yeah. I also like to thank my agents as well. Uh, at, 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 at ACC, the Academy, like the production, like, production team. team. I guess I think like to thank Will Smith for his performance and uh, slapping the crap out of <laughs> Chris Rock. <laughs> Chris Rock. <laughs> we all look. We all wanted to. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, Amanda, I love you. Thank you so much for your support. And of course, my three cats: Beaches, Bucky, you and think Sam. The cats last. Because they're so cute. They're so Bold. cute. Bold. Bold. They would sit on my lap when I was typing this thing. It was, it was very nice. Bold. I love you guys. Okay. All right. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I did it. I fixed it. it. You fixed it. Great job, bud. Thanks. Okay, S- Jay. Oscar bait. Your movie. I am fixing... Into Oscar bait, the classic Alien versus Predator. Um, <laughs> ever, the Discord already, the Discord people already know that because I did a watch along of this movie with the Discord. Um, and I have to say, I have to say, yeah, I actually enjoyed the hell out of. It's my first time watching it. Oh. I actually had a great time watching Alien versus Predator. Okay, I, I, I've, I've only seen it. Look, once. it's not, it's not great. No, but it's fun. The set pieces are fun. Okay, the fights are fun. I don't remember. I kind of remember hoot. the broad strokes of it. So yeah, yeah. Give me that. Give me that plot so drop. I will give you a plot drop of Alien versus Predator. Uh, humans uh, get a heat signature of a very large temple underneath uh, the Arctic Circle. It's like two thousand miles. It's like two thousand yards underneath, like ice ice pack. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, we just find this heat signature. Like other people probably saw it too. Like we need, they're putting together a crew to go get there. They get a bunch of reluctant humans. They, uh, <laughs> they, they all like the experts in their fields. They make their way down into this, uh, like temple. Uh, it turns out like this is, it's very clearly alien. It has like influences from all different human cultures. Like this is like predates humanity. Whoa. Okay. Um, like maybe this is the inspiration for all the other pyramids that have ever been made. Oh, there's Aztec. There's like, there's everything. Okay. Um, and they make their way into the, uh, pyramid and we find out, uh, that a group of predators has also seen the heat signature of the temple and they, uh, invade towards uh, the egress. So with the humans are going in as well for the entrance, rather sure. not the egress. Uh, so they, the predators make their way down there and we Making come to way. find out that the, the temple is, uh, has a imprisoned, a, uh, xenomorph queen. What? And oh. the, the temple is used as a like test for predators sure. to like, it basically like, like humans were like the predators would come like every hundred years mm-hmm. to like do this test and the humans would like they thought they were gods and so like they would sacrifice themselves to make xenomorphs ah, and like okay, the yeah. hunters the the predators would have to prove themselves by hunting xenomorphs sure. in this temple okay um 
they like the humans come there they ac- accidentally take like the predator weapons that they were supposed to get to in order to like fight the xenomorphs oh um and basically xenomorphs get out all hell breaks loose mm-hmm. uh and then the aliens and the predators fight yep uh, there's all sorts. All the most of the humans die except for our uh, our lead, mm-hmm. um, and basically uh, they end up having to blow up the temple. Uh, As you do, the last predator uh, helps uh, our main character kill the queen, but is also killed in the process. And we find out that there's like an, an cloaked predator ship watching the entire thing go down. Oh yeah, and that's it. Isn't there a little stinger in the credits as well? Am I yeah. remembering that correctly? Uh, there was a one of the, the stinger in the credit, like at the tail end of the movie, was uh, one of the predators had been attacked by a face hugger, and a xenomorph f- predator came out. Oh yeah, a predalien, as they call it, which is terrible, but that's what they call it. Yeah, I don't. That was yes. That's Alien versus Predator. It's literally that better. simple. It's yeah. literally that simple. Um, but it's a hoot. I mean, it's it's all B list actors. Sure. It's all you know. They're spending the majority of their money on. Honestly, the sets were incredible. The temple was nuts. Okay. Like oh, there's all these moving parts and like people are like getting trapped places. It's like because the whole temple like moves. And, oh really? Oh yeah. Like the rooms shift. Like they basically build it so like you, you know. So it's an H H Holmes temple. Pretty to much the like you are yeah. you, like it is it is the kind of thing where it's like killing these xenomorphs will be a challenge. Oh okay. Like it is clearly a predator challenge, um, but like the humans fight the predators, the predators fight the humans, but then like our main character and one of the predator teams up and fought because she kills a xenomorph with one of their spears. Yeah. And he's like, as a sign of respect, he's like, "You help me." Yes. Let's go. You'll be a predator. Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, but that's literally about it. But honestly, when a movie titled Alien vs. Predator, that's really all you need. I mean, yeah. I remember watching the movie when closer to when it actually came out. I think when like it hit uh when it hit like streaming or Blockbuster back in the day. Because when when did that movie come out? Like uh, 2004. Oh wow, it's almost 20 years old. Yeah, Blockbuster's still around back then. I remember watching that movie the one time. I was like, oh, why are there humans in this? Man, I thought it was supposed to be Alien vs. Predator. You don't get a, you don't get xenomorphs without humans. Sure, but then after that, it's like these humans are still sticking around. Why can't we just follow the predator? Uh, because they don't. Neither of these neither of these predators don't talk. Neither do aliens. Oh no no, I get it now. I'm changing that in my fix, by the way. Um, Woo! You'll see. Okay. Um, Brian, before I get into my fix, uh, why don't you roll me some beautiful bean fun fact footage about Alien vs. Predator? Thank you, gentlemen. But before I go into the bean fun facts of Alien vs. Predator, I do want to make two minor corrections. Glory came out December 15th, 1989. And the 1993 movie that you're talking about with the plastic gun is in the line of fire. Okay, now we can talk about 2004's Alien vs. Predator. Written and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, it stars aliens, and Predators. Now this movie cost around $70 million to make and made around $177.4 million and spawned the sequel, Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Now Alien vs. Predator was first introduced in a 1989 comic book and then there actually is an alien Easter egg in Predator 2. And if you care, this has a 22% on Rotten Tomatoes. Anyway, back to you gentlemen. Thank you, Brian. Well done, Brian. Very well done. Okay. So, my fix of Alien vs. Predator. I'm turning it into Oscar bait. First, we need a small recast. Okay. So, we are opening the movie in this in the same way. Um, uh, it's the guy who plays Bishop who's playing like a... Yes. And, and, I, and it's not sure if he's playing, if he's Bishop or not. Oh, like the during, human... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's the same actor and he's playing a wealthy millionaire who uh, wants to okay. s- find these aliens. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and he hires a group of people, like, you know, experts mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. who are tasked. Um, we are keeping... I um, cannot remember her name to save my life. Um, come on, man. Do not, why are, uh, is it Sana Lathan or Sana Lathan? Or I Sana. I don't know. Sana Lathan. Uh, the lead actress? Yeah, Sana Lathan. We are keeping Sana Lathan. Okay. Here's here's why. Okay. 
If Oscars love anything, they do. It is a it's new faces. They do love new faces. Like we, I'm I'm giving her the ability to have a performance, a supporting actor performance that will like springboard her into other things because I think she's actually really talented. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I don't even know how to pronounce her name yet, and she's been in a ton of movies, kind of bums me out. So I think she's great, and I think we're we're gonna give her an Oscar turn in this movie. Awesome. Now, in order to have a new face have a Oscar like Oscar contention, right? We gotta have backup. We do. So the she is uh uh Saint Elathan is like the climbing expert that's gonna like get them into the ground, okay? Get them through the ice, sure, and, sure. Like, get them down there. I'm with she, you. She's like the expedition. She expert. repels them down. Yes, she's yes. wildly repellent. Um, but she's the one. She's the, she's like the expedition expert, mm-hmm. and so you also have a scientist um, who is the pyramid expert. Okay, and like cult, mm-hmm. the cultural sure. expert yep. can read all the languages yep. that are down there. Mm-hmm. That is going to be played by Adrian Brody. Oh, because in the movie he's an Italian dude, but Adrian Brody can also kind of play that. Ita- Wait, like Adrian has... Brody's in this movie? No, I'm recasting oh, I see, it I as see. Adrian I, I see, Brody. I see, I see. He's playing the scientist character, and then we have uh, another uh, si- like kind of an engineer type guy mm-hmm. who is more interested in like power sources and things like that. Who is played? Who's played by the Scottish guy? He kind of looks like Mike White. It, um, but, okay. Uh, but uh, I am recasting that character as Eddie Redmayne. Whoa. Okay. So we have another Oscar. Sure. Uh, another Oscar. Uh, Contender or Oscar winner, rather, excuse mm-hmm, me, mm-hmm. and then the person, the millionaire that got them down there, who demands to come on the expedition, even though he's not healthy enough, is going to be Sir Anthony Hopkins. Whoa! So you have all of these Oscar-winning contenders. Wow! Behind, like, behind Saint Elathan, so it can she can shine if she, like yo if she's like doing this good with like these guys, yeah, like get it, girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, the situation goes as normal. They make their way down into the pyramid. Sure. And uh, we're keeping the majority of it uh, the same up until this point. Um, And I feel like this movie could, like, if it was shot properly and had a little bit more budget, this Mm would have won for, like, best set design, like, easily. Oh, okay. Like, art direction. Mm -hmm. Because, like, Mm -hmm. this this pyramid, considering what their budget was, the pyramid that they built for this was nuts. Oh, wow. So, like, if they had just a little bit more budget, Mm -hmm. like, this could have been a huge deal. But we get to a point where uh, they take the weapons and the predators finally make themselves known to the humans. Okay. We're keeping all of the actions exactly the same. Um, the predators uh, start fighting the humans to get their like, well, shoulder cannons back mm-hmm. from them. Uh, basically, like the humans grab the shoulder cannons like out of this like like treasure box they find. Ba-na-na-na. And as they do it, like it start like it makes the, the aliens come out. Sure. Like it makes the face huggers. Yeah. To start the process, because mm-hmm. um, it's all like connected. Yeah. Um, so the predators start finding them, and then uh, eventually uh, we get the xenomorphs and the xeno- like the alien xenomorphs and the predators start fighting, keeping all of the action for the most part relatively the same. Okay. We would give Anthony Hopkins like a really good speech, like when they're down there, like why this is going to be his legacy mm-hmm. and something like that. Like more Oscar, give give people more scenery to chew. Of course. Of course. But Alien uh, and Predator start fighting. One of the Predators, like, goes down completely. And you find the other Predator fighting over his body. He takes a down one of the aliens and murders it completely. And they have a process where when they take down the alien, they have to mark their helmet and and their forehead to prove that they've taken one down with the acid. Mm-hmm, right. Um, and as that Predator... Uh, takes off uh, his mask to do so, mm-hmm. um, he is attacked by a face hugger. Oh, no! Uh, and so that predator goes down. He is thought to be killed by the other predator that comes and finds the scene, like, shoots him in the head. Right. Um, but then uh, there's more fighting between that alien. That alien gets taken down. The pred- Our last predator standing um, is standing over the predator body. And the... A xenomorph that was in the predator pops out, but as uh, as the xenomorph pops out, the predator is standing there and hears it like the 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 clicking growl thing. Okay, and then uh, the alien queen comes crawling down. They see um, 
they see the the predator xenomorph mm-hmm. in between them. They look down, see it, and uh, look back up. And there, I think the whole time, like Sine Lathan is kind of watching this whole thing go down. Sure. And then we get a blackout. Like there's 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 a moment where they're all look they look at each other. The predator lowers its spear, blackout. We cut to the ten years later. Whoa, oh. whoa, whoa, whoa! I forget. I forgot. I forgot. Um, I forgot. We we're sitting this in 1970. The the original actions. We're sitting this in 1970. Okay. Okay. Because we come up ten years later, 1981, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. The Predator is getting off of the one train on 86th street. It's a little bit later than he expected. And he is like trying to like pick up some flowers from the, from the corner person. And he's very clearly like, I'm running late. I'm running late. And he gets home uh, to his apartment and they're uh, sitting at the, uh, the uh, (laughs) sitting on the t- the living room floor watching television uh-huh. is the young yep. predator, ten alien, year old predator alien, yeah. ten year old predator alien, and the uh, the alien queen is in the kitchen like cleaning up after dinner, visibly upset with the fact that uh, <laughs> that the predator is late. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, this is where we get subtitles. Sure, we start to get subtitles for like their cl- weird clicking and mm-hmm. growling and all the stuff yes. that they do. And we find out that like it, obviously like his the predator's new job in finance is taking up entirely too much of his time and entirely too much of his life. And it's it clearly the, like they're not a priority anymore. And the the queen has kind of had it. Yeah. Eventually, eventually the predator kind of talks the 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 queen xenomorph down. And uh, they just like they both have a moment where they look at their kid and they realize like that's why they're doing this. Sure. But you see like kind of there's something going on with the alien queen, and then we cut to uh, <laughs> the uh, predator uh, waking up one morning to find uh, the xenomorph queen uh, has gone. She's left a note. She said she's gone. Uh, she's gone to California to kind of figure some stuff out. I'm not really inter- like I'm not really interested in being a family anymore. Whoa! Oh no! And so the problem is you have the predator who is spending too much time at his job, and this pred alien that he's trying Child, to raise. Yeah. And so as we, we get him pre- yeah. as a single, single uh, predator dad. Yeah. Yeah. But also, uh, so event predator gets gets closer with his next door neighbor, who is Sine Lathan. <laughs> Who was also raising Adrian Brody's kid oh, because Adrian Brody God. got murdered in the temple. Yeah, of course he did, yeah. But like you know, they had a. Mo- She's like, well, we had that one night before. That we one went moment, down. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this so was the seventies. They're know. trying to figure out how to be single parents together. There's like a xenomorph and like a kid like playing in the park, um, laughing as they don't get splashed by acid. <laughs> and it turns out that like the uh, the predator eventually loses his job at the finance office because he's trying to raise his son. Oh no! Yeah, obviously a priority. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that it, a lot, a good amount of his life kind of starts to go to pot, but it's making his relationship with his son better. The the pred alien much better. Yeah. But then. Uh, out of nowhere, as soon, when things kind of start to level off a little bit, mm-hmm. and the predator has, you know, he's gone back to predating a little bit. Predating, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, just to make ends meet. Sure, but like it's not glamorous work it's exactly. The 80s. But he yeah. can be home by five. You sure, know? yeah, that's a big you, deal. You can predate, you know, nine to five here in the city back in the eighties. The it turns out that the the alien xenomorph queen, yes, has come back from California. Oh no. But she is suing for custody of the pred alien child. She's uh, like, I'm the mother. This is my kid. And it it becomes a long and heated battle. Sine Lathan has to take the stand. Oh, it's a court battle over the kid. It's a court battle over the kid. Um, and it, it, it comes to light all the predators like, well, they lost their job. They've, you know... All of these things, like the character, the character assassination of the predator is mm-hmm. like truly like, is the thing that gives, um, is the thing that gives the court the 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 right to give 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, custody? Custody. Custody of the child mm-hmm. to the xenomorph queen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it through all of like the court stuff, there's also scenes where she's seeing like their son doing really well with mm-hmm. the dad and like he's doing the best he can and like really sees how everything and like she the, the xenomorph queen also ends up seeing um seeing how her leaving like really hurt the family mm-hmm. and it, it, the xenomorph queen shows up to get custody and kind of has a little bit of a breakdown and decides to leave the predator leave the pred alien child with the predator and goes back to California. And that is how I've turned alien versus predator into Kramer versus Kramer. (laughs) 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 Which to its credit, Kramer versus Kramer won a lot of Oscars. <laughs> I just looked it up. I was like, court ba- Wait a second. Wait a second. I typed in Oscar movie, child custody case. And Kramer versus Kramer. <laughs> well, Kimberly was weird. I was telling her that when I was telling her what we were doing for this episode, she was just like, she was like, oh, man, how are you going to turn that into Oscar movie? I was like, well, it's Alien versus Predator. You just make it Kramer versus Kramer. And she went, that, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> Jay. <laughs> uh, That's how Sinead yeah. yep. gets the, uh, yeah, that, that's the yeah. supporting actor yeah. nod. Mm-hmm. It's, it's moments like this where I truly appreciate our friendship <laughs> because we had the same assignment <laughs> and i was like hey what if we do the wild west version of crash <laughs> that a lot of boxes checked yeah man. this is amazing but like taking an existing thing and like figuring out and you decided- i just took what other movie has verses in it <laughs> But two people won a lot of Oscars. It did win a, it won a ton of Oscars. Yeah. And it won for Best Picture. Uh, <laughs> Have really, you ever seen Kramer vs. Kramer? I've, no. It's actually a great movie. It's a I really bet good it, movie. It won if you best look picture. at the synopsis of it, it doesn't look like a lot happens in it, but it's just really good acting. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great flick. <laughs> you are insane. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm glad you went second. Oh, no, I knew it. No, there was yeah. no way. There was no way. Yeah, pe- I think people are starting to figure out if Jay's going second. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's, so a, there's, there's a joke there's coming. A, there's something afoot. Yeah. <laughs> a punchline. It's haunt, haunts Because normally, but if you're looking, peeking behind the curtain to fix it, there's a lot of times where I go, I have to go second. <laughs> I, I cannot go first. I've I've fixed every president. <laughs> There's no way. Too fast. Okay, too furious. That, dude, the <laughs> fact that you haven't seen the movie, adventure. the fact that like I got that far without you figuring it out made because you were like, oh, what? Huh? You were laughing, but I was like, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. I don't. He doesn't know where I'm going. <laughs> It's like I got how I got about twenty minutes into the the, uh, the Captain Planet fix on in the in the happening. Well, yeah, you you had to hide that because I would yes. clocked it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Whew. isn't this fun though? This is a fun. This show. is a fun this show. This is fun we get to do. This is fun. I like this. I think we should keep doing this next year for the Oscars next year. I think year. so. I think it's we, a, the, yeah, the Oscar bait another bad movie. We were kind of worried if this is going to work today a little bit, but mm-hmm. you know. It turned out. Thanks for all of the the bean footage, Brian. Sorry we pimped you out three times there, but it's all good. No, Brian doesn't mind getting pimped out for bean fat fun fact footages. That's true. All right. Well, we did it. We we told Jay these are award winning movies. Different years. <laughs> I don't want to go head to head with Alien <laughs> versus Predator. Look, look. If Avatar is just Pocahontas, I can make Alien versus you Predator. Totally versus you totally can. You totally can. I don't think there's anything I can. You know. You totally can. It's different enough. It very much is. It's still Dustin Hoffman in a lot of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I think that about does it for us. If you guys are uh, listening to this on uh, anywhere uh, you digest your podcast, if you wouldn't mind uh, leaving us a quick review, just throw us some five stars. Why not? It makes me really happy to see and maybe leave a little review, even if it's just to say hi to me. Hey, Jay, I know you're reading this and I hope you're having a great day. Like, that's fine, too. That makes me happy. <laughs> I, I like weirdly get I read those I read all of those comments and I know. it means a lot to me. Um, also, if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching along. You know how to be a good steward of the content that you like. Like, subscribe, hit that bell, do that YouTube that you do so well. I mean, guacamole's extra. You Kramer versus Kramer fighting weirdos, you. <laughs> and as we end every episode, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I forgot what you're doing yeah. for a second. And as we end every episode, <laughs> heartbreak feels good. In a place like this. It's the slow, pred alien child custody, custody case, battle. custody battle that you don't see coming for two acts. Because I assume that Blackout's <laughs> the end of Act 1. Yeah, it is. And then all of Act 2 yeah. is all the way to the point where Act she comes is back and is like, ser- get, yeah, yeah, you're getting served that I want, uh-huh. I want custody of the child. Yep. And Act 3 is the entire court case. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Ha, 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 ha.